I have been trying to set a world record in Kerbal Space Program for literally years. And for years, I have failed. Yeah, a lot of disappointment, a lot of explosions, a lot of things just not really going my way. That is, until now. That's right. As of today, I am officially claiming to have set a KSP world record. And what record is that? I am claiming to have created the smallest SSTO in all of Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> Mind blown, right? But Pyola, you know, Pyola, you may ask, isn't Vaus the current record holder? I mean, didn't he just break it like a week ago? And to that I say yes, he was. So what I want to do in today's video is to actually go through the craft that Vaus created and show you the fatal flaw that allowed me to beat it. Then of course, to prove that I'm not just making all this up, I will actually show you the prestigious world record craft that I have constructed. So let's get straight into it, shall we? All right, so here are, this is the video that was created by Vaus where he kind of showcased his design. And here it is. It looks pretty simple, doesn't it? And it kind of is, if you count it the part, like one, two, three, four, five, only six parts. And it's just the, the spark engine, probe core, two fuel tanks, intake, and the solar panel. So it's like, how, how can you optimize this design? How can you really improve it? And trust me, there is a way, because if you look at it, okay, well, okay, so this is how it works. So it, it's not super complicated, but you have the spark engine on the bottom, and the way you want to kind of fly this thing is if you can get it out of the atmosphere quickly enough without melting the intake, and you get it, you have to also make sure you're just barely above 70 kilometers for maximum efficiency. But uh, you definitely go watch this video if you want a little more detailed explanation here. But there is theoretically, with just these two little Oscar B fuel tanks, there is theoretically enough Delta V to make it into orbit, as you can see right here. And he actually drained a little bit of fuel out of that, uh, that top fuel tank. So there's almost a little bit of extra fuel, which is absolutely insane. And using this design, he managed to get the total mass of this SSTO down to 615 kilograms. Wow, which is insane. Here, go join his channel member thing. So how do we improve that? How do we improve it? Well, I will show you because I got to thinking, I was like, there's gotta be a way. There's gotta be a way. And, and this was my first idea, which was to basically just swap out the engines because in Vaus's video, he used a spark engine and that weighs considerably more than the Twitch engine. So I thought you just swap them over, bippity boppity boop, world record set, video over, goodbye everybody. And nope, it is not that simple. Why can't my life just be easy? Why can't I just set world records in 10 minutes and then just go eat potato chips for the rest of the day? Well, okay, no, because you can see the problem here. There's starting to be a little bit of a turn developing, and that's, that's not really gonna work. All right, well, that's no problem. We can just, I have, I have an idea for that. We can actually just add a second intake on the bottom. And what this does is it occludes the node, thereby kind of tricking KSP into basically reducing the aerodynamic drag and aerodynamic effects. So maybe that solves it. Maybe there's something goofy going on with the engine. We just kind of clip it in there. That should solve it, right? No problem. Eh, a little bit of a problem. Little bit of a problem. It is still not stable. It is still just going all over the place. Um, okay. Ye that's fine because I have I have one more trick up my sleeve and that is okay we can go back to the spark engine yeah okay maybe Vaus isn't stupid maybe he knows what he's doing but what we can do is we can remove the intake whoa why do that well in Vaus's video his ascent was limited by the thermal capacity of that intake it can only take 1200 kelvin of heat the Oscar B fuel tank on the other hand can take 2000 kelvin Alrighty, we're getting somewhere, and you you save a little bit of weight by reducing the by getting rid of the intake. Uh, but what you're kind of risking is the aerodynamic stability. So here we go. We're launching. Doesn't seem to be a problem. This is this working? Have I done it? Oh my god, guys, I'm doing it. She's going, and she is starting to pitch up. Well, shoot, that is not okay. Um, uh, hmm. All right, I'm kind of running out of ideas, guys, here. What do we, what do we do? 
What we do is we go back to the source. We go back to where it all started, right? Vaus's video, because the solution has been hiding in plain sight this whole time. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please direct your attention to the top right hand corner of the screen? All right, what do we see? Okay, we see liquid fuel and oxidizer, and that's really what I've been focusing on this whole time. I've been trying to make a craft that burns the least amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer, obviously, right? But what else is there? <gasps> Electric charge. And after doing a little bit of research, I realized that the electric charge is actually the key to all this. Because the most important part on this craft is not the engine, it's not the fuel tank, it's not the aerodynamics. It is actually the solar panel. Whoa. Okay. First of all, why is there a solar panel? Well, as you can see in the clip that you are currently looking at, the electric charge of the probe core will decrease over time. There's only five units of electric charge in there. And as time goes on, as your launch progresses, the electric charge tick, 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 tick down. And it eventually gets to the point where you will run out of electric charge before you get to orbit. Okay, well, we haven't solved it then because you need the solar panel so you actually have enough electric charge to actually do the orbital insertion burn. But there is actually a sneaky little feature in KSP that has let me beat the record by simply removing the solar panel. Yep, there it is, guys. There is the big grand reveal. The whole video I've been building up to this. I saved a grand total of five kilograms. We went from 615 down to 610 kilograms by just removing the solar panel. But wait, how? How does that work? Didn't you just say that without the solar panel, there's not enough electric charge to make it into orbit, right? Wrong, my dear viewer. Let me explain because this is kind of the little tiny tweak I'm okay. I should make a disclaimer here. This is really Vaus's record. Like, honestly, I just kind of waltzed in here, made a tiny little optimization, and slapped my name on and said, Boom, my record now. Bye bye. I'm using his ascent profile 99% the same vehicle as him. He kind of did all the work, and I just kind of did, oh, boop, there we go, mine. Uh, <laughs> so, you should really give him the credit. I just wanted a record. There's only a few weeks until KSB2 comes out. So, come on, guys. I needed this. I'm going to I'm going to put a plaque up. I'm going to frame it. It's going to go on my bed. I'm going to look at it every day in the morning. KSP World Record. But no. Um let me actually show you guys the solution I came up with. What I did, right click, hibernation mode. Boom. There it is. It's not using any electric charge. Look at the top right. Hibernation. We can we can drift on up to the apogee and not use any electric charge. Therefore, solar panel is not needed. Boom, we did it. Well, we didn't do it yet. We actually have to get into orbit, which Delta V is really tight. Let's hit the engine. Go, right, go, 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 go. This is the scary part. This did take a few attempts. It's not the easiest thing to fly. Uh, not as hard as you might think, though. It's actually, you may be able to do it. Let me know if you want a tutorial. I can show you guys how to, how to fly this thing if you want. But we have a little bit of Delta V and boom, orbit, world record. We did it, guys. Oh my God.